Welcome to part three of the lesson on looking for patterns to write equations or formulas. Example three is the same as the first two examples. We're asked to determine the pattern and complete the table, graph the results, and write a formula or equation to describe the relationship between the input and output variables. So the inputs are the x values and the outputs are the y values. Notice how we're given all the inputs, where the first input value is negative three, and then the inputs increase by one all the way to positive four. And now let's focus on the outputs or y values. We have nine, four, a missing output, zero, one, a missing output, nine and 16. So maybe for this example, it's not quite so obvious what the pattern is with the outputs. So another approach would be to look at both the inputs and outputs together, meaning can we find a symbolic rule or formula so that when x equals negative three, y equals nine, when x equals negative two, y equals four, here we have a missing output. When x equals zero, y equals zero. When x equals one, y equals one. When x equals three, y equals nine. And when x equals four, y equals 16. Focusing on these two, maybe we can recognize that if we square the x value of the input, we do get the corresponding output or y value. And this is going to be our symbolic rule. The output y, is equal to the square of the input, or in this case, x squared, or the square of x. Let's see if this does work for the given ordered pairs. Notice when x is three, three squared is nine, which is the output. When x equals four, four squared is 16, the output. Even when we have the negative inputs, when x equals negative two, the square of negative two would be negative two times negative two, which is four which is the corresponding output. So this is a symbolic rule. Let's use this to find the missing outputs. So when x is negative one, we'd have y equals the square of negative one, which is negative one times negative one, which is positive one. And then when the input or x is equal to two, the square of two or two squared is equal to four. So the corresponding output or y value is four. Now let's write out the ordered pairs. We have negative three comma nine, negative two comma four, negative one comma one, and so on. Now I'll set up the Cartesian plane to plot these points. Notice how the x values again go from negative four to positive three, and the y values go from zero to a maximum value of 16. So because there are no negative y values, let's sketch the horizontal axis lower than we normally do, let's say here, and we'll sketch the vertical axis here as we normally do. Now the reason why we adjusted the horizontal axis lower than we normally do is because, again, there are no negative outputs or y values, so we're not going to be using this negative part of the vertical axis. Now because of the inputs, Let's scale the horizontal axis by ones. So to the right, we'd have one, two, three, four, and so on. And to the left or negative direction, we have negative one, negative two, and so on. And now for the vertical axis, because we have a maximum output value or y value of 16, we need to go at least as high as 16, if not higher. So because of the number of grids here, let's go to mark off each grid and scale this by two. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and so on. And now let's go ahead and plot the points. So the first order pair is negative three comma nine. So because the input is negative three, we go to negative three on the horizontal axis, which is here. And then because the output is nine, we go up to nine on the vertical axis, which would be here. This point has an input of negative three and output of nine. The next order pair is negative two comma four. So the input is negative two, the output is four, which would be here. Again, input negative two, output four. The next order pair is negative one comma one. So, so left negative one, up one. Next order pair is the origin, zero comma zero, which is here. Next order pair is one comma one, so right one, up one. Next order pair is two comma four, input of two, output of four. Next order pair is three comma nine, so we go right to an input of three, 
and up to an output of 9. The last order pair is 4 comma 16, so we have an input of 4 and an output of 16, which should be here. Now let's go ahead and check our table on the graphing calculator, and we'll also check this graphically. So we first press y equals, clear out any old equations or formulas, enter x squared by pressing x, and here's the squared key. And now let's first go to the table to verify this symbolic rule or formula or equation does generate this table here. So we'll press second graph. We already have the table on automatic. And scrolling down the table, notice how the x and y values or inputs and outputs do match our table. Before we look at this graphically, let's adjust the window to make it match our window here on the Cartesian plane. So we'll press window, change the x min and x max to negative eight and eight. So negative eight, enter, eight, enter. The y min, let's say, is going to be negative six, which we didn't label here, but we didn't have to. The y max, 24. And we're scaling this by twos, so we'll change the y scale to two and press graph. Notice how the calculator is giving us a continuous graph, not just a set of points. And that's because when we take a look at the symbolic rule or formula or equation given by y equals x squared, this is telling us that for any real number along the horizontal number line or horizontal axis, we can determine the output by squaring the input value, which means using this symbolic rule or formula, every point on this graph does have meaning. So let's go ahead and modify our discrete graph by graphing a continuous graph. Again, the reason why this continuous graph has meaning once we have this symbolic rule or formula is if we select any point on this continuous graph, the coordinates or the ordered pair for each point would satisfy this equation, meaning, meaning if we select any x value and square it, we would get the corresponding y value, which gives us one point on this continuous graph. I hope you found this helpful.